working in the street. Mm -hmm. Imagine if each of them had $20 in their pocket and they all marched to a black business. Mm -hmm. They're talking about thousands of people in the street. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if those thousands of people had $20 in their pocket and they went to the local black business and spent their money there? Do you know what would happen? Can you only, so what I, you know, what I recommend is I um, went and I visited a college in Virginia. And what I said to them was, you, you need to have something called the power march. Once a month, these were students, college students. I said, once a month, you need to put $20 in your pocket and decide what black business in Richmond, Virginia, you're going to go to to spend your money. Call it the power march. Can you imagine if everybody marching put $20 in their pocket mm -hmm. and went to a black business and spent their money? Just think about the impact that that would have. And suppose you did that once a, once a month. And then suppose you did that once a week. And then suppose you didn't spend 20, but let's say you spend $50. Mm -hmm. Do you know what would happen to black businesses? We wouldn't have to argue about what's going on. Because once you control your economics, then you, want to, then you control your politics. Once you tr control your politics, then you control your police. Yep. And once you control your police, you control your community. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where we need to be right now. Solutions. We need mm -hmm. to be solutionaires. Thank you. Thank you. Because so solutions, that's my thing. Um, I, I see myself as a pretty rational person, but sometimes when you're talking to your people, you're, you're <laughs> I got to push that back and we, we head into emotional territory, but you're totally right. You're yes. totally right. Yes. And you know, my brother, for our people's sake, that's where they are. Mm. And so many times I venture in there, mm. but I'm always trying to pull them out. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not going into that emotion to stay there. I'm going mm. into that emotion to pull you out of your emotion and start to look at things scientifically. Mm -hmm. yeah. What can you start to do right now to change the conditions that you're under? Mm -hmm. I can, we already know what has happened. We know why it happened. We know who did it. We know how they did it. We know that. Mm -hmm. We don't need to rehash that. And I'm not trying to get them off the hook for what they did. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying, fam, is that we have to take responsibility for the conditions we find ourselves in. Exactly. I know what they did. I'm not trying to give them an excuse or anything. What I'm saying is that when you blame somebody else for the condition that you're in, you give them the power to take you out of that condition, but you also give them the power to keep you in. Mm. You know, when you're dealing with algebra, you're solving for your solution, mm -hmm. you, you have variables. Yeah. Only those variables will solve your problem. Europeans are not a variable in my problem right now. <laughs> it's up to us to make those decisions what we're going to do as a family. And we have to, and if I may do this, there is a brother here, phenomenal brother, scholar, comedic scholar, his name is Baba Heru. I call him yeah. Samar, he's a jeweler. Mm -hmm. And he posted up the other day that we need to stop calling it Pan-Africanism. Okay. He said, cause Pan is a Roman word, which means mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you say Pan-Africa, all Africans, mm -hmm. Pan-Africa. Mm -hmm. He said that the word that we should use is Nebu, Nebu Africa. N-E-B-U, Nebu, mm -hmm. in the Kemetic language, according to Baba Heru, means all. But not just all as we know all. All, like cosmic all, like universal all. Mm, okay. So you're not just calling all Africans to the table. You're calling the cosmos to the table. You're calling everybody 
get involved in this? And the I guess, creators, I ancestors. If I may, if I may have a question, Dan. If we use even the term Africa, is yes. also using the term of the Europeans? Well, no. because the land mass wasn't called before. Honestly, I'll be honest with you. I don't even, I don't think, you, you see, when you get into people's minds, <clears throat> I mm -hmm. don't know if Afro, if, if the indigenous people of the continent <clears throat> had a word for the continent. Because the, the psychology of African people was nation state. Yes. They mm -hmm. went by the nation. And normally that nation was bounded by natural boundaries. Could be a river, could be a mountain range. Mm -hmm. uh, it could have been some type of geological thing that created some form of boundary of a particular nation. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Onsu, uh, or, you know, you could be uh, uh, um, uh, Yoruba, you know, from mm -hmm. Ghana. You know, like tribes and family, tribes exactly. and family like that. Yes, yes, that's so, what I mean. And psychologically, I don't think they may have had a name for the continent. They were not continent bound. They were nation oh. bound, nations in relationship with other nations. Mm -hmm. But their psychology was not about defining a continent. No. That has nothing to do with good or bad. It has to do with your psychological dimensions of your cultural common sense. So mm -hmm. to go back to your word Africa, I don't even know if they had a word for the continent. But I'll tell you what I like. I like Ra Ka. Because the way he spells Africa is A F R A K A. Africa. Mm -hmm. Nebu Africa is the word that means what we say as Pan Africanism. But your concern for that word and its origins has its place. Mm -hmm. But until because, we know better, yeah. see, our yeah. people are not mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The folks that may be on Facebook now, this communion that we're having right now, we're at a certain level in our consciousness. Yeah. But so we got to talk to our people that ain't here. Yeah. We got to bring the information down. Yes. That's it. Yes. That's what I'm asking. Because if we um, want to break um, even the pen with European, then even breaking the bond of Africa, it's also European, also this uh, it, because it was always like tribe, like na nation and nationality yeah. belong under certain people. Yeah, yeah. See, the word Ra is comedic. Mm -hmm. Ra means the the light and heat sound energy of the sun. Ka means spirit. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, we can attach an Africanness to the word Af Ra Ka. Mm -hmm one day we'll take it a step further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But until we're there, we do the best we can with what we got. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that we have to do is we have to mm -hmm. understand, you know, as my brother has the, the red, the black, and the green behind him, Africa for Africans at home and abroad. Totally, totally, and yeah. That's how we have to look at this. this we, mm -hmm. we are a collective African people in the world. Mm -hmm. And we have a common bond that ties us together mm -hmm. yep. and we have a we have a divine purpose because i think what we're doing right now is phenomenal the fact that you're in the netherlands and i'm in the united states and we can have this communion and share it with other people around the world you, you, you can't get better than that <laughs> really? yeah. You can't get better than that. So one of the solutions is just keep this going. Exactly. That's one of the solutions. Keep this going. Keep these types of meetings going. Yeah. I like that. Ashe, we all do that, of course. Ashe, mm -hmm. Ashe. Mm -hmm. It ain't over till we win. Like you said, totally. That's it. Hey, brothers. Mm -hmm. I might have a small. I was just. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, host is back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's back. I was just um, doing the word on the back, you know, in the back. And we are live. We are live on House of Capra. We have been okay. live a few minutes, but I wanted you to continue. Um, the conversation. We can, we can start. We've started this conversation. This is House of Capra. My name is I, also known as Ruth. Dr. Kaba calls me Ruth. 
Um, we're here with uh, Omawale, um, Omawale Atunwa, and mm -hmm. Nekunia, mm -hmm. and Santayo, 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 yeah, I hope, yeah. And, yeah, like and Jonathan, and of course, Dr. Kaba Kamene, and we are in conversation with, and that means that we are, will talk about a certain uh, topics that will uh, benefit um, the community. And as uh, my first question with uh, Dr. Kaba was, um, well, how do we start building a conversation, um, a community, right? Um, because we only see the differences but how do we overcome that? Um, I will leave the floor for you guys to talk with Dr. Kaba. I will be on the background. Um, you know what to do, yeah? You, 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 you know my uh, sister, I, I'll call you I now. <laughs> you know, what uh, becomes important is, is uh, first of all, for the community that's watching to realize that the House of Kepra emanates out of the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And that when Sissa I first invited me to the Netherlands, I had visited through Brother Imak. My brother Imak and the community brought me, and again, just to give some history, many of the brothers and sisters that I've come in contact with as it relates to the Netherlands speak Dutch. They are from Suriname, South America, and the islands of Aruba, Bonaire, Curaçao of the Caribbean. The, the, they are the Dutch speaking branch of the African family. And I, and I say this only because of those that might not be aware of the dynamics of what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, because it, this program emanates out of Holland and Historically, my experience was when I went in 2009 for the first time, Brother Imak, and we went, we spoke on the Dogon people of Mali. Mm -hmm. But as time went on through Brother Imak and, and other uh, people that impacted Sisa Ai, she invited me to come to Holland in 2016. And the title of my trip, I mean, Sisa had me going all over the place. We worked and had a great time when we were there. We, uh, and we even got on the train, I mean, everywhere. You know, we just went different places. I had a chance to speak some of the children, visited schools while I was there. But the title of my presentation for my visit, the whole was from Harlem, New York to Harlem, Netherlands, the ties that bind us. The point that I was trying to make is that wherever an African is, Africa is. And wherever Africa is, I am home. We have to begin to start to look at ourselves as a collective people and to understand our shared experiences. And current events have shown that there are ties that bind us. Whether we are see, seeing people protesting in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands, or in Bristol, or in Birmingham, or in London, UK, whether they're in the streets in Nigeria or Kenya, whether they're in Puerto Rico or Jamaica, whether they're in New York or Chicago, there is a collective demand now. Got to change. And if you're not going to change, we're going to make it change. That has to be our psyche. We have to start to look inward on ourselves and begin to develop us from within. So my just introduction to this uh, phenomenal uh, communion that we're having is the fact that we have got to begin to have this conversation amongst us as a people. Because everywhere around the world, the more melanated you are, the more disrespected you are. But once you know your history, once you know who you are, you set for yourself what's going to happen in your life. And I understand why they forbid us to read. <laughs> because once I started reading and I found out how great I really was, I don't want to hear this from them no more. <laughs> once you know how great you are, once you know where you come from, once you know what your ancestors did, 
once you understand that from a perspective, then you put in line for your life what you want. And then, you know, there may be some people that you may ask for something, but for the most part, whatever you need, you were born with. All you got to do is find it and get it on. Yeah. One second. Um, Nechum, yeah, and all the others. If you want to share the link, you can go to the Facebook page from House of Kebra and then click on the link or then or click share. This is how you do it. Uh, this gives me an opportunity to thank Dr. Kaba for the introduction. It was um, really actually five years ago that I contacted a uh, brother Imak and he contact, uh, got me in contact with Dr. Kaba. This is how it all started. So you see, it all, always starts with an idea. And um, the idea from now for this, this conversation is uh, to talk about a few to topics. And one of the topics is spirituality. And the other topic is uh, religion. And the other topic is uh, African Trinity. Um, you can also ask questions if you are watching on Facebook or on another uh, platform or device, or you're just, you know, dropping in. You can also ask questions because we will, um, yeah, try to answer them. This is what we're doing. It's not that, uh, I mean, Dr. Kaba is the, the person with the most, uh, um, how you say it? The most... Um, uh, Knowledge. Again? Knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge and experience. I was looking for the experience. But we all have our own experience here in Holland. And of course he was here in Holland and he gave us a very um, good insight just now for what happened in the train when we were, and that was standing your ground. But we all have our own experience and it would be nice for us to share as well with Dr. Kaba what our experience is and he can give. And so we can, um, you know, um, I, th I hope at the end of this conversation, we would get um, like a, 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 a different insight, a different narrative from where we can uh, go from there. I hope I'm a little bit clear on what the purpose is. Um, so the first um, question, because Dr. Kaba, you were already um, saying and elaborating about the spirituality, like a global spiritual um, thing happening. Um, what, is, what is your, your, your view about uh, spirituality? Um, you know, it was, you know, it was interesting because um, my thing has been the, the, the book that I wrote, Spirituality Before Religions, was really uh, my summarizing my life's experience. My life's experience as growing up Roman Catholic and being exposed uh, to the religion of Roman Catholicism. And then to have neighbors, friends of mine that practice Santeria. Now, for those that understand what Santeria is, it, it, it is the African Orishas brought from Yoruba, Nigeria, to the Caribbean. It's called syncretism, where they will take Roman Catholicism and superimpose it over their African Orisha system. In the French-speaking Caribbean is called voodoo. In Brazil, in Portugal, in Portuguese, it's called candomblé. In the English-speaking Caribbean, it's called obia. In the United States, it's called the Baptist Church. It is how we took our African faith system and superimposed it. And here we are now practicing it. So, my neighbors spoke Spanish and they practiced Santeria. And I was introduced to Africa. See, I was introduced to Africa through spirituality, not through um, history. 
But then I was introduced and I learned my history also. But to answer your question, I wrote the book because about six years ago, I came to realize certain things about spirituality. And what I realized is that spirituality is unseen science and science is seen spirituality. When I really got into the African perspective of spirituality, spirituality is an energy. It is a power. It is a force that's universal. Here on earth, we see it all around us. After other people from other parts of the world, people from the northern climate came down, they took that spiritual system and they created religions from that. And they broke it up into pieces. To Africa, they didn't really have a religion. They had a way of life. And in that way of life, they expressed their own belief system. And what I attempted to do in my book, Spirituality Before Religions, was to analyze the comedic texts in a way that people would be able to see no matter what religion you belong to, you can find your scripture on the walls of Africa or in the papyri. You'll find it. It's there. And what I do is I analyze the text to show you where in all of the major religions, no matter what it is, you can find the beginnings of it in Africa. Spirituality is the energy. Like for instance, you see my hand, right? Now here's my hand, but what was it that made it rise? How did I bring it up? That you don't see. That's invisible, you don't see. That's the energy that allows us. Everything that has animation has spirit within it. Everything that moves has spirit within it. And there are basically two cosmic laws as it relates to spirituality, as I, as I see it within our ancestors' writings. Number one is to realize that each and every one of us is the creator having a human experience. The second law is to treat the creator's creations as we would treat ourselves. Because you know, if we really, if, if first and foremost, we saw ourselves as the creator, if we respected and loved ourselves, we would treat other people as if they were the creator also. We wouldn't do what we're doing to them, to each other. The pain that we're causing, we wouldn't do that to each other because we would live by a code of ma'at, which is balance and justice and righteousness. And when you live according to those laws, there are certain things you won't do. You won't poison the water. You won't poison the earth. You won't create air pollution. Africans could have done that years ago, long before Europeans got all this technology. Africans could have done that. Folk in Africa have been around for millions of years. They could have done that if they wanted to, but they lived by sacred principles that said, you will not hurt nature. You will not cut down the trees for no reason at all. You will not go hunting and kill animals just to put their head up on your wall. That did not exist in the African framework in the original human being's mind because nature was Africa's first teacher. Nature taught us. Nature was like our master teacher. And you can't understand Kemet, Egypt, if you don't understand Kush. But you can't understand Kush if you don't understand the Twa and Buti people of central South Africa. They are the original human beings, the Twa and Buti. They are the original. They, and they are derogatorily called pygmies. So maybe some of us may know it as pygmy, but that's a derogatory term. They are called Twa and Buti. They are known as the San or the Koi of Southern Africa. They are known as Moesha. 
Anu. These are names for the original human beings on the planet, short stature, maybe three foot eight to about their towering giants were five foot one. These are the first human beings on our planet. They are the ones that laid out the law and they were the ones that learned from nature. Everything we have today is built on what they taught us, but we don't know our history. And because we've been denied this, we really don't see the greatness within us. We are the creator having a human experience. We are in the likeness. And also God is not just a man. God is also a woman. Let's not get that twisted. I can't get my head around a religion that believes that God is only a man. I, I, I can't get with that. I don't understand how that works. God is both man and woman simultaneously. The combined energies that bring forward all life in the cosmos, from the stars, to the earth, to the plants, to the humans, to the animals. There is an energy system that runs through all of that. And it is sacred, but it's science. Religions are the children of spirituality. And our ancestors had it. I, I traced the whole thing through, bring the family through the framework of understanding what actually is going on. And how our ancestors laid it out. The judgment scene, everything that exists in the religions of today, from agnostic to Zoroastrian, I can show you in Africa. I can show you on the walls of the pyramid text. I can show you in the coffin text of the Middle Kingdom. I can show you in the book of the coming forth today by night. I can show you Genesis in the Shabaka stone. I can show you the story of Cain and Abel. I can show you the story of Noah and the flood. The Eucharistic feast that is celebrated in the uh, Christian church, the idea of the, the bread and the wine and water. You know, to our ancestors, it was interesting because the wine and the water, the, 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 the reason why the priest, for, for, for those that know the Roman Catholic mass, the reason why the priest and the altar boy mix water with wine is actually the divination of the human being. The, the wine represents the earthly manifestation and the water represents the spiritual manifestations. And when you mix wine with water, you get body and spirit. That's how deep this is. Our ancestors developed that story and we don't even realize it. It's carved on the walls of the pyramid text in the pyramid of Unas, the last Pharaoh of the fifth dynasty. It's carved in his temple. Utterance number 273 and 274. I even got the numbers for you. <laughs> this is us. We don't even know this. We don't see this. We see somebody up on a cross, normally of European descent, but we don't even realize that we were the ones that first told the story of ingesting the divinity. Because when we told the story in utterance 273, 274, we, we weren't literally speaking about eating somebody's body and drinking somebody's blood. What, this, what was carved on the wall was the fact that the divine human in ingesting divinity, you know where the proverb come from is say, you are what you eat. The idea of ingesting the divinity or the divine ones or to eat of the gods is for you to become like them as they are divine. It, it really wasn't about actually eating the body and drinking the blood of a human being. That's cannibalistic and that's vampirism right there they were speaking in metaphor but eurasians took the metaphor 
literally. And they created religions out of the metaphor. And this is where we are right now. And spirit is that animation that comes through the rays of light, heat, and sun energy. Comes from the sun. The rays, light, heat, and sound energy. It's like the rays of the, of the sun is the car and spirit is the driver. And coming down to earth, this is what creates life. It's a beautiful so, story. Kawa, I have two, two questions, basically. So um, for the people that are watching us right now, when we are talking about our ancestors, right? Yes. Most people uh, assume that, okay, you guys are from West and Central Africa. Why are you guys talking about Egypt, for example? What do you say to that? Because the people, the Twa people, the inner African people are who the Kemites are. They're the same people. Mm -hmm. They just moved. Mm -hmm. From Central South Africa, they moved along the Hopi or the Nile River. Mm -hmm. They went to West Africa. They mm -hmm. went further down south in Southern mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. The Kemites are the Twa. Mm -hmm. They are later developments of a people that would travel throughout Africa. But mm -hmm. the original people born at the foothills of the mountains of the moon mm -hmm. in the countries we today call uh, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, mm -hmm. Congo, Southern Africa, in that area, that's where the human family was conceived and born. Okay. That is the Twa people, the short statured people. When you're the saying Twa the Twa people, um, I mean, to use the Eurocentric terms, we are Negroes, Bantu, uh, we are uh, Khoisan, we are Cushitic. Yes. Uh, so these phenotypes, are we children of the Twa? Or are we? Related? Are we brothers? Yeah, we are them. Mm -hmm. We are the Twa. Mm -hmm. We are the, the the Twa are the only human beings on the planet for millions of years. Mm -hmm. When they they start off as hunters and gatherers, mm -hmm. and normally it was the men who were the hunters and the women were the gatherers of of the fruits and the berries and the the things for sustenance. Mm -hmm. From hunters and gatherers, we also added agriculture. After thousands of years, we, mm -hmm. we became agriculturalists. Mm -hmm. We began uh, animal husbandry. We began to domesticate animals to have them help us on the farms. Mm -hmm. And we developed. And the, the better the early people ate the twa, the better they ate, the better they thought, the better they thought, the better they ate they developed an agri-science that gave birth to the need to study the heavens in order to know what seasons that you were going through. Because this is when early, early human beings, not now that we know all this, this is when humans mm -hmm. were first beginning to learn yeah. and develop themselves. Mm -hmm. This is why I say nature was their teacher. Yeah. Because what these Africans saw, these Twa and Buti saw, men and women, they saw that when seed saw a seed on the ground, they saw the earth eventually take that seed down and then would come forward to plant or the or whatever it was that the seed was. Mm -hmm. And so these early human beings, they're smart now. They're looking, they're, they're saying, but you know something? I could get, let's use watermelon as an example. <laughs> yeah. What cuz I love watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Take a watermelon seed. It's the most perfect food you can eat. It has everything that you need. Watermelon. You put the seed in the ground, you grow up more watermelons. And they said, "Wow, that's very interesting." So, if I put my finger in the ground and put a hole, it'll save time from the earth having to bring the seed down. So they started to put holes in the ground and put seeds in. 
from there they grew and they said, well, my finger hurt when I keep doing it. So they put sticks and they use sticks and then they put three sticks together and put three seeds in. And then they connected the, the, the three sticks to a long stick and they dragged it and put seeds all along. This is the beginning of farming. But at the same time, they saw that they planted the seed and then the plant was born. But then the plant grew, it aged, it died, it decayed. But then next season, it came back. That was the birth of spirituality. The idea of the resurrection of the soul of the human became a metaphor because of agriculture. That's what I mean when I say nature taught them. Because here in the ground, they saw a seed, just like a man plant a seed in a woman. The baby's conceived. The baby's born after 10 months. Baby grows into a, a adult. The adult ages, dies, the body decays, then the resurrection of the soul. So the entire concept of spirituality, the entire concept of resurrection, the entire concept of religion, of the resurrection of the soul came out of their study of agriculture. That's how it happened. It was interesting. There's a brother by the name of Edward Bruce he wrote a book, Dark Light. He goes deep by this conversation. And it's just phenomenal the way the story goes. And you know, my, my disappointment is we don't really see the true beauty because we're so caught up in these fantasy stories in religion. These are fantasies. The real story is so beautiful that if we knew it as a people, we would embrace it. That is what sustained us for millions of years. Thousands of years of technology was built. That's why the pyramids were built. Pyramids were built specifically to chart the, the heavens. When you go to those three pyramids and the other three, the smaller ones, they are all lines of sight. All of the entrances to those pyramids, Khufu, Khafra, and Menkara, the three major pyramids in Giza. All of the entrances, if you were to put a, 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 if you were to shine a light out of the entrance way into the heavens, all three entrances point right at the North Star. That's how accurate they built those pyramids. And they built them for agricultural reasons to be able to chart the heavens and to know the seasons. And they created a 26,000 year calendar. They called it the great year. And it began in the age of Pisces. The age of Pisces was about 2000 years ago. So-called when we talk about BC and AD, that's actually astronomical. That has nothing to do with the birth of Jesus Christ. That has to do with the moving out of the age of Aries into the age of Pisces. For the past 2000 odd years, we've been in the age of Pisces. We are now moving into the age of Aquarius, which is also known as the age of the black cosmic mother. And a lot of this stuff we see going on right now is getting ready for the return of the black cosmic mother. We are now moving into the age of Aquarius. We're, we're on the cusp. This is why all this stuff is going on. This is that the shakeup is going on. This is what was going on 2000 years ago. Every, every house, there are 12 houses in the great year. Every house is 2,160 years in length. You multiply that by 12, there are 12 houses. 12 times 2,160 becomes 25,920. So that's how long we've been around. This is our ancestors wrote this out. In Congo, we call it Mama Mandombi, the return of the Black Madonna. 
There we go. Say that again. What do you call it? Mama Wandombi, the Black Madonna. Oh, Mama, right. Mama Wandombi. One Mama Wandom Ndombi. In Dombi. Mama yeah. in Dombi. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wandombi. Where where is that from, brother? That's from uh, uh, Kikongo language. It's from the Congo, Central Africa. There we go. There we go. The land of the original people, brother. The return of the Black Madonna. That's it. Wow. The return of the Black Madonna. That's good. Thanks for sharing that, brother, because the last chapter of my book deals with the return of the Black Cosmic Mother. I wish I'd had this conversation with you last year this time. I could have included <laughs> Mama and uh, Mama Wandombi. <laughs> Wandombi, I would have included that. <laughs> but that's exactly what it is. She is she is the guide. That's not to take away from brothers now. And that becomes very important also. Because as the male energy, we also have our role in this. And it is us who compliment her and it is she who compliments the men. Together, ma'at, we make things happen. This is the basis for our faith system. One of the first things that we will do as we move forward with success is to improve the relationships between the African man and the African woman. It's, it's cornerstone. A nation is only as strong as its weakest family. When the family is, when the family unit, the Twa built their civilization around the family unit. Family units built nations around the relationships between families and families. That's why weddings are so important. Weddings. Here, you know, you get two people married. Oh, I'm in love. From an ancient perspective, you know, no. Families come together. Not just individuals. Families join and create nations. You, you know, because first of all, look, let's be real. I've been married 39 years, okay? you don't get married because you in love. You get married because you infatuated. When you and that young lady or whomever your partner is and you're with them and, you know, they, they calling you on the phone and, you know, you checking the phone to make sure that the phone work and they, you talk to them and you get butterflies in your stomach and you're so excited to see them, okay? That's infatuation. Marriage. Love in marriage is when you want to walk away, but you stay together because you realize it's bigger than you. Marriages unite families in times they unite nations. And so as we move forward, some of the solutions that we have to have is just how we're operating in our relationships with our sisters and with our brothers. That's one of the first things that we have to start doing. You know, and, and that's part of the solution. You know, when we were talking earlier, brother that was on, held up his baby girl, you know? Uh, the energy that he gave that little, even in holding that baby girl, the energy that the brother gave to that baby girl was a family energy. It's, it's an energy that that young lady, when she grows up through life will remember and she will give that energy to her children. This is how we do it. We hand it down to our family. That's why they broke us the way they did in terms of separating us because they knew our strength was in that person-to-person -person relationship. And here's another solution. Here's another thing that we can start to do. When we pass each other, greet each other, it's un-African not to speak to each other. 
you know where I live. I live in a building of 33 stories. I'm I live on the top floor, right? And I and I get on the elevator, and I see a brother or sister get on the elevator. I say good morning. <laughs> okay. They don't necessarily want to speak. Next day they get on. Good morning. Still have a little trouble. Down the road. Good morning. They say good morning. Next time I get on, I say good morning. They say good morning to you. The next time they get on, they say to me, good morning. Somebody has to be strong enough to break down the pain that we feel. All of us, all of us Africans, worldwide, by matter of degree, we feel pain every day. When we wake up in the morning, we try to figure out how long can I live today without somebody reminding me I am black? Somehow, something's going to happen that I'm going to be reminded that I'm black be it TV, be it on my job, be it when I'm eating lunch, somebody's gonna remind me that I am a black man or a black woman. We have to know our history and just understand who we are as a people. Brother, you said you had two questions. I hope I answered the first one. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Cabo. So I, I, I wanted to ask you some questions, however, I just noticed that my mic was muted, so I was like talking to myself basically. So um, yeah, you 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 definitely um, uh, give gave us the right directions towards the answer. Yes, no doubt. So the, the question that that so today I was reading about um, Herodotus on mm. his travels into Egypt because I was researching about migration patterns and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. And you were just talking about the, the age of Aries, the age of uh, uh, Pisces, and the age of the, uh, uh, the Great Mother, right? So what just came to mind was, so basically you were talking about the age of Amun, the age of Konsu, and the age of Mut. And those are the three triads of, of um, Waset. Did, did I make the correct connection? Yes, there are, and, and, and there are also other connections that you can make. But okay. yes, both, you see, the way we think is multi-referential. I've learned that when, when I look at African philosophy, many answers mm -hmm. can solve the same situation. Mm -hmm. So when you have Konsu, and you have Mut, okay? The triad, the, the trinity, everything comes in the trinity, in the three. Mm -hmm. In Shabaka stone, it comes the Nun Pata Atum. It's there. Uh, you, 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 you have Amun, okay, of Waset. You have the temple of Amun, Karnak. So that the idea of the Trinity or the triad, you see the age of Aries that goes back 4,000, 5,000 years ago is Amun. It is the ram. That's why it's the ram. Because Amen is the ram head, also known as Kanum. So the age of Aries about 4,000 years ago, give or take, mm -hmm. was the age of the ram. Now, what's the ram? A ram is a male sheep a female sheep is called a u e w e the baby produced by the ram and the u is called a lamb that is why in crossing over from the age of aries with the amun priesthood mm. into the age of pisces what did you had you had the lamb of god who was to take away the sins of the world this was the birth of the Piscean age, which is the age of the fish. This is why you see a lot of Christians have a fish as a symbol. Because Pisces is represented by the fish. It doesn't have to do with Jesus being a fisherman because Jesus wasn't a fisherman. He was a carpenter, according to the story. 
but he they he they used the parable of him being a fisher of men. That was the age of Pisces. Now the age of Pisces was about two thousand years ago, two thousand one hundred and sixty years now. Brings us to today, and now we're on the cusp of moving from the age of the fish to the age of water, which is the age of knowledge and wisdom. And the sacrificial lamb was what happened over the past 2,000 years. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, like in the church, you, 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 you have a, a part after, towards the end of the mass, you have, it's called the Agnus Dei. It's a prayer in Latin. And, and in English, it's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's, that's the prayer, the Agnus Dei. That prayer actually is an, an evocation of cosmology. It's not religious. It's scientific. That's why science is seen spirituality and spirituality is unseen science. In all, every religion symbol is astronomical, whether it be the cross or whether it be the, uh, uh, the star of Ast or what we call the star of David in terms of Judaism, or be it the, 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 uh, the crescent moon and star of Islam. Those are all astronomical symbols and they all come from Africa. That's why whenever we talk about somebody in heaven, we always look up. When we talk about them guiding us, we always say, look down on us. And so even heaven is up in the sky. Mm -hmm. And that comes from African cosmology, science. Black folk, original black folk did not believe in God and they did not have faith in God. Because you can lose your faith and you can stop believing. African people know God. They know the creator. In fact, I, 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 I saw the creator this morning. I saw the creator brush his teeth. I saw the creator wash his face. <laughs> I should. <laughs> so did you. <laughs> you, Roy. You, Roy, years ago had a song. He said, God is a man. <laughs> Bob Marley got a song, you know. God is a living man and woman. Yeah. Each and every one of us is the creator having a human experience. And how we treat each other is how we treat the creator. How, how we treat nature is how we treat the creator. Exactly, yeah. Don't desecrate nature and then and then go to church and think everything is all right. Because mm -hmm. that money you put in the church did not absolve you of your sin against nature. Yeah, that, that, that's that's one of the critical um, discussions in the moment uh, on, during those times between uh, actually into the communities between the the Africans who are, are Christians or Muslims. And those who's trying to regain their spirituality, you know, that's the kind of conflict we're having into discussion about how building our new nation while having those uh, opposites, what they call opposites, because to me, religion is not the opposite to spirituality, but those who are into religions, they seem to, because they not well interpreting the African spirituality or you know, the knowledge that came out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you, and you know, brother, the point that you make is so well taken because religion, let, I'll speak for the United States. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that this applies to, to the colonialism practiced in, in Africa also. And for the experience of the Caribbean, South and Central America, but I'm gonna tell the story from the perspective of what happened in the United States. The brutality and the savagery of Europeans towards African people when they were enslaved was horrific. The torture, the murder and the mayhem was very painful. 
But Bob Marley has a song, the last song on his last album. It's called Redemption Song. Hmm. It's old pirates, yes, they rob I, sold I to the merchant ships. Minutes after they took I from the bottomless pit. But my hand was made strong by the hand of the Almighty. We forward in this generation triumphantly. The point I'm making is that African people moved forward and did the best they could to survive. They knew that if they were able to get through this, somebody down the road would be free. This story of Jesus to Christ that they learned on the plantation. It was a story that reminded them of themselves and what they were going through. And this religion allowed our people to be able to get to the next day without going stark raving mad or committing suicide. They fought tenaciously and they stood proudly with whatever they had. But this religion allowed them, it, it acted as a crutch to allow them to survive. And I can understand that. And for that level, Dr. Amos Wilson, great psychologist, tells us that a good organization meets its people's needs and solves its people's problems. A good organization meets its people's needs and solves its people's problems. Religion. Christianity for those Africans on the plantation. It met their needs and solved their problems. It allowed them to be able to survive the pain. I can only imagine what that must have been like to have to go through that, to endure that. But they did. And part of it was because of this religion that they held so close to. However, in the world we're living in today, if a religion no longer meets your needs and solves your problems, it's like carrying the boat on your back after you cross the river. It solved your problem and met your needs to get you across the water. But if you keep carrying that boat, it becomes a burden. And for some of us, religion has become a burden. As beautiful as it was at that time, it is now a burden because you're carrying it on land on your back. You, you need to dock that boat, walk free. And that Mr. schism Collins. that we have is because some of us have broke from that. We know we know our African spirituality. We know who we are, we're, we're free. But there are still some of our people who need to crutch because they still believe they're crippled. Like, I really love, love that approach because I never saw it from that way. Like, you know, like some of our brothers and sisters were in need and religion was the reason for them to yes. carry on to the next stage and yes. probably maybe to meet up with us at the next level. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love our people unconditionally and I know what they go through. Life for our, some of our people is very painful. Very Every day they're in pain for whatever it may be, mental, physical, spiritual, mm -hmm. they're in pain. And all human beings need to hold on to something to get them through. Some people eat a lot, some people do drugs, some people alcoholic, you know? Some people's church. Church is an addiction. <laughs> an addiction is something that you do that you don't really need to do, but you do it because you believe and you feel that it can get you to the next level. And some of our people are like that. And, and, and I love them sincerely. But you got to free yourself, free your African mind to be who you were born to be, unashamedly and unapologetically African. Dr. Kaba, I would like to pose a question. Um, I understand what you're saying. I, I, I really see the value of that approach. But at the same time, 
for us who are African spiritualists, um, we are constantly bombarded with negative stereotypes and our people are fighting against us. We don't, we don't want to fight them. I mean, we just want to uh, draw, uh, draw out the Africanity that they have inside of them. What can we do about, yeah, about that? How can we help them embrace their Africanity, their spirituality? Lead by example. Hmm. Lead by example. Okay. You know, when, when, when they come after me, I simply tell them, the lion does not lose sleep over what the sheep think about them. Mm. <laughs> okay. I'm just not worried about that now. Okay. I'm 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 not concerned. I I I'm 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 looking for three out of a hundred. Mm -hmm. Wherever they may be, anywhere in the world, I'm 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 looking for three folk out of a hundred. I'm not trying to win everybody over. Mm. I'm, I'm not, I'm through with converting because mm -hmm. if, if I have to, if, if, if I have to convince you of what I'm talking about, there's nothing I will say that will convince you. If I don't need to convince you, then let's roll back our sleeves and just let's get it on. Mm -hmm. I love our people unconditionally, my brother, but I don't have time for them right now. I, I'd rather talk to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would rather talk to Brother Omowali. Mm -hmm. I'd rather talk to Sisa Ai. I don't have time for you anymore. There are very important days on us right now. From where I'm coming from, in my maturity, I can tell you one thing. The most precious thing each and every one of us has is time. If you were to take a very rich man or woman and put them on their deathbed, and if you, by some way, could give them one wish, they wouldn't wish for more money, they wouldn't wish for more houses, they wouldn't wish for more cars. I believe they would wish for a little more time. Time is the most precious thing that we have. We have to use it wisely. And I am at the point right now, I don't have time to convince people of what I'm saying. Truth knows truth. What has brought us together in this conversation mm. is truth knows truth. It's not even really us as individuals. We are all linked together through truth. Truth knows truth. And when that link up occurs, it's phenomenal. If I'm in a group of people, I'm presenting ideas, they're presenting ideas, mm. and they come down on me because <laughs> they, they get frightened with some of the things that I say. You know, like when I say I'm God having a human experience, the whole church want to pass out. <laughs> they don't know how to deal with that. They're so used to adoring this white Jesus. When I say I'm God having a human experience, they don't know what to do with that. It's heretic, sacrilegious, because that's how brainwashed they've been. They're searching for all the right things in the wrong places. Everybody looking outside. You know, when I was young in, in the uh, Catholic church, they, they, you know, when you go to church, they, they have candles that you light and you, you, you pray for things. Okay. And in the church where I was, they, they had that little 25 cent candle. Mm. And then they had a larger dollar candle. And then they had the real large $5 candle. And my mother and I would go to church like on a Saturday. And I would see the, the candles and they would all be in different sections. And I, and I would ask my, my mother, I say, Ma, uh, we're lighting the 25 cent candle because that's how we have to roll, okay? We're lighting a 25 cent candle. I said, but they're lighting a dollar candle and they're lighting a $5 candle. Now here's how my economics works in my head as a six-year-old child. 
I'm saying, like, if we light the 25 cent candle and they light the five dollar candle, is God going to answer their prayers quicker than my quarter? <laughs> this is the mind of a child. And I'm looking at this, I'm saying there's something wrong with this right here. And my mother would explain it to me, but it was the hustle of the church. Because that's exactly what they wanted you to believe. Because why would they have three different prices? Make more money. That's it. It's all about the Benjamins. And so when when we're looking at this and we're and we're understanding where it is that we're coming from as a people, I don't have time right now. We have too much work that we have to do as a family and as a people to chart the future for our people. Down the road, if I I, I will always be open for you, if ever you change your mind if ever you come upon information if somebody may inspire you in a way that nobody else has ever inspired you before and all of a sudden the light goes off and you begin to see certain things which i hope happens you can always come back to me i will never refuse you i love our people unconditionally but i just don't have time for you right now i'd rather talk to you mm -hmm. Because so, you're receptive. I have so to, the, the I have, cover. Okay, one, one second, please. Oh, one second, course, because course. we have a lot of people now, a lot of people. We have some questions or some. Yeah, a lot of questions. Yeah. A lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> you also have questions? People also, yeah. you have questions. I mean. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm supposed to. I'm, I'm supposed to line up all the questions right now. Yeah. Exactly. So this is why I'm, I'm at, because we're now at 2116. So it's a quarter I'm looking at the clock, I'm like, we have to talk about much more stuff. <laughs> yeah, for an hour. So I really want to, uh, I'll start first. And if you guys have questions, of course, but let me start because the people took the time to uh, say something. And that's, uh, okay, Jose Bronze is also asking a question and you have to keep in mind that we have a delay. Yeah, we have a little bit of delay. So when you ask your questions, they will be answered if you're still in time. Uh, but there are uh, there is a delay from uh, this platform to the Facebook. It's almost about twenty second delay. So uh, mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Okay, Jose Bronze is saying things to us. He's not actually, but I really wanted to talk to uh, to you about it. See what you want to say. Um, uh, he 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 was saying something about. Uh, a, a lot of things, but I'm going to take took some sentences from the Bible and he wanted much more enlightenment about it. This is what I understood from, from it. Oh, thank you. You see, that's why he's king. That's why he's king. <laughs> yeah, that was also, and he also had some said something about the Big Bang. And I think Dr. Kaba just said something about uh, the lights going out, you're seeing things, things are starting to, you know, hit. He said, there's a big star on the heaven and it fits in your head as above, so below. And uh, Fifeka Maura responded on your comment, uh, Don, and she said that uh, that was deep and she agrees with you and she never looked at it that way. That's a moment ago, but that's what she said. Actually, it came from our brother Kaba when he told, he told us, explained us about religion and the Christians that they needed to carry on to the next level. Yeah, I agree with Amy. Haven't looked at it that way. Yeah. That's what she's saying. And uh, Bottle Noche is saying yes. And Michelle Adier is saying a shame. Dominique Safir is saying a lot of people, people who started with you may not finish with you. That's her, um, that's what she's saying. So yeah. yeah, they are watching and they are collaborating. With um, with this, so I don't know if uh, Nehum Ya wants to say something or the other, so we can, um, you know, drop the questions about what Dr. Kaba was saying before about uh, uh, the spirituality and the religion. Well, we we started about ages, right? And I wanted with you know with Dr. Kaba probably to make the connection into astrology as part of our spirituality. Mm. 
I also had questions about that because it was way above my head. I didn't understand. That's why I had to bring it back. <laughs> so we had to come back. I mean, we have to, you know, break it down because you guys were talking about it and I was like, okay, I don't get it. So can you, can you break that down, please? Dr. Kava. Okay, please tell me what it was that I was saying that you might not have understood. About Where? the ages and the bite, perhaps Don Carleon can because it's more of his. Um, well, you, you yeah. spoke about the ages, right? And yeah. uh, as astrology being part of our spirituality, yeah. you know, for yes. a lot of people that uh, you know they heard about the age of Pisces, the age of Ram, and they're like, oh, hold on a second, we have okay. to deal with this daily. So, what's the difference between the ages and the daily okay. combinations and so on and so on? Let me take you back to the early human beings that began to look up into the heavens. Remember I told you about the pyramids that each north, each, each entrance to the three pyramids are all on the north side of the pyramid. If you lined up all of the entrance ways with a, a beam of light that went through the entrance up into the heavens, they would all, all three would focus in on the north star. The North Star is important because of the way in which the earth, earth wobbles. 23 and a third tilt, the earth wobbles. But in so doing, looking up into the heavens, there is a particular star system that allows you to track your year. Amongst our ancestors, we had many calendars. We had a lunar calendar, which is a monthly calendar that counted 30 days. We had another one that actually was a leap year. Like after every 1,400 and something years, we literally added a year. Instead of like what we do every four years, we add a date of February. When you get back into the original world, they literally had a calendar where they went 365 for, for 1,400 and odd years on through. But at the end of that cycle, they added an entire 365 days as a leap year. That was the original, that's why it was originally called leap year, because they literally put an entire year at the end of this particular cycle. Our ancestors also had a calendar that was 26,000 years old. It was called the Great Year. And they went by what's called the precessional of the equinox. Like just the other day, uh, we moved into another sign during the summer solstice, right? and. Well, let's go back to Aries, okay? The way we experience it, we go from Aquarius, January, Pisces, February, Aries, March, give or take between the month. But we go Pisces, uh, we go Aquarius, Pisces, uh, uh, Aries. In the processional of the equinox, it goes the other way. It goes from Aries, to Pisces, to Aquarius. That's the way it goes. Now, in this 26,000 year calendar, they had 12 months of which these houses were, Pisces, Aquarius, Aries. But every house lasted for 2,100 and 60 years. 2000, what, 20 years ago, when history was split in half, Christianity says that that zero, zero mark was the birth of Jesus Christ. Everything that happened before that birth, called before Christ, Everything after Anno Domino means everything after the birth of Christ. 
But the reality is, is that when you're looking at this calendar of, of this particular 2,160 years, the precession of the equinox 4,000 years ago was the age of Aries. That is why the Amun priesthood was so important. The Amun priesthood 2,000 years ago was moving out and brought in the age of Pisces. And for 2,160 years, we'd be in the age of Pisces, which is all cosmological, okay? Right now, in, the, in where we are right now in the world, we are in the age of Aquarius. We're, we're, we're on the beginning side of it, the age of Aquarius. Just like the so-called birth of Christ was the beginning, so to speak, of the age of Pisces. And so now we are right on the cusp moving into the age of Aquarius, which is the water bearer, which is a feminine energy, which is the return of the black cosmic mother. And every time this happens, there, there are always a lot of different things that go on, earthquakes, volcanoes, all sorts of uh, 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 floods, things happen. And so now we are on our way into the age of Aquarius. There's changes about to come, as you can already see. We are in the middle of a global warming, which man did not do. He'd like to think he could do, but this global warming has been coming for a long time. In fact, even scientists today are telling you that the Global warming started in the 1800s. It's gotten progressively hotter over time. The earth is shifting right now. This is natural. This is not, not like a, a, some type of hocus pocus or I'm trying to draw on some kind of psychic energy. This ain't got nothing to do with that. This is science. And this is what we're experiencing right now. All of these upheavals, the pandemics that we're going through, all of this is part of of, of, of this cleansing of the earth. And this is where we are right now. And so the, the 26,000 year calendar is called the great year. There is evidence of Africans in Kenya, the Konso people. There is, uh, uh, there, there is you can Google this, Namora Tunga. Google Namora Tunga, I'm gonna spell it for you. N-A-M-O-R-A-T-U-N-G-A, -A Namora Tunga, N-A-M-O-R-A-T-U-N-G-A, -A Namora Tunga. It's a site in Kenya of the Konso people where they literally put up basalt stiles, like stones, that are lines of sight to various constellations in the heavens. Don't believe me. <laughs> Don't believe a word I say. Study the magnificence of your people. How brilliant. These are people from Kenya. They wrote an article in Blacks and Science. If you have the book by Ivan Van Sertema. Guyanese brother. He wrote a book. Well, he edited the book, and one of the essays in it is the Moratunga. It's, it's phenomenal what our ancestors knew. And we have been so brainwashed to believe that we are primitive people and that we should be so thankful that they came to save us. And we don't know that everything they have, they got from us. Yeah. Mr. Kaba, oh. um, I have a question about, uh, can you hear me? I can hear you, brother. You're okay. clear. Uh, about what you said early, earlier about um, uh, we used to come from uh, our people used to be in slavery and all the things uh, that they used to do to us and but you also speak about uh, spirituality and uh, you, you talked about Ma'at and um, for me I, I want to know like even in these days it, it's not uh, like it used to be but we're still uh, our people are still getting uh, murdered uh, our women are getting raped 
we are still in these conditions. But um, for me, it's a struggle to like uh, be spiritual, to think about the loss of my art when all these things are going on around us. So for me, I want to ask you like, how is it possible for us to like survive, to thrive when we have this stress, but still uh, don't break the laws of my art? How can, is that even possible? Or uh, do I have to think about it in, a, in another way? Or how can we deal uh, with this? You know, it's interesting because again, you know, one of my favorite uh, artists, musical artists is Bob Marley. And one of my favorite songs is Redemption Song. And in Redemption Song, what I did before was the first stanza. But the second stanza of this song, Bob Marley says, emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Have no fear for atomic energy because none of them can stop the time. Now here's the key. How long shall they kill our prophets while we stand aside and look? Some say it's just a part of it. We've got to fulfill the book. And I think what Bob Marley was telling us is exactly what your question is asking. How can we stay spiritual under these types of conditions? And I think of our ancestors and what they went through what they had to endure. Something got them through that. It, it was Christianity, but it was deeper than Christianity. They used Christianity as a crutch. But if you're crippled and you have a crutch and you walk, you're still living. You just have a crutch. And, we're, and we are now at a point in our lives where we can see times are changing. And with the resilience of our ancestors, you know, only the best of the best could have survived this. And I'm not saying that, well, no, I am saying it in the sense that there's a proverb that says, what don't kill you make you stronger. We have withstood a lot. Most Europeans are still trying to figure out how we're still here. They're trying to figure out how do these people maintain all, with everything we've done to them, they still smile. They still can go to a party and have fun. They still can love their wife, their husband, their significant other. They still can love. How is that possible? What is it in them that makes them so, so tenacious and so powerful? Whether we realize it or not, we are miracles in the deepest sense of the word. For us to survive what we've been through all these years and for us still to have these conversations, be us from Congo or Eritrea or Ethiopia or Suriname, New York City, for us to have these conversations, this is a miracle. Go back, go back 300 years. Do you think our ancestors ever thought that the House of Kepra would have a Zoom meeting? <laughs> and be doing this, think about it though. Think, think real hard about what we've been through and think about where we are. We have to be proud of ourselves. We have to say, yeah, we went through that and we continue to go through that. And that's a horrible thing. But the fact that we're still here, we need to celebrate our power and our tenacity that no matter what they've thrown at us, still we rise. Mm -hmm. Ashe, mm -hmm. do you think um, that it has to, that has to do with how how deeper? I mean, for those who are spiritual, um, how deeper beliefs into reincarnation? That since we know that we've been here before, I mean, the calendar, new in history, future. How, how, no, I should start. Actually, I should start about what what, what are your thoughts about reincarnation according to spirituality? Well, there are many different results of life but here's what i know brother what i know is that the original human being that rose through all of the different levels of life that arrived at their technological advancement the depth of spirituality 
the understanding of, of who you are and your power, your relationship with nature. It created a human being that lived in six dimensions. Black folk are six dimensional people. Mm -hmm. Western culture is three dimensions, mm -hmm. length, width, and height. This is what they deal with, what they can touch, what they can see, what they can smell, what they can taste. It's all superficial, physical level. That's three dimensions. That's the way black folk were, African folk were thousands of years ago. But something happened at that third dimension when they took all three dimensions and they, they brought it all into one. You see, three dimensions are, are guided by time and space. Mm -hmm. Time is history, uh, space is geography. Everything is right here. Okay, this is all I know. I don't know nothing about yes, I don't know nothing about tomorrow. I just know today. The Western civilization lives that way. We took those three dimensions and we compressed them together. And what we did is we brought the time-space continuum together. So it wasn't time and space, it was time-space which meant that we were able to connect to our ancestors. Now, who are our ancestors? In Spirituality Before Religions, I spend a segment talking about who the ancestors are, when we say it. And I'm talking to everyday people. I'm not talking about, you know, for some of us, we may know who the ancestors are, but for people that don't know anything about ancestors, they swear you're praying to the devil. They think that ancestor worship is praying to the devil. But you know, if you take, like who are your ancestors? Okay, first level, your parents. You have two of those. The next level is your grandparents. You've got four of those. And then come your great grandparents. Okay, do you know that when you get down to your seventh, 17th great grandparents, you have 1,046,133 ancestors. <laughs> wow. 17. When you get to your 17th great grandparent, that just goes back 17 generations. We're just talking 17 generations. You're over a million ancestors that dwell within you. So can you imagine when you go all the way back to the Twa and Bhuti? How many essences are within you? Who makes Sisa I? Billions of human beings reside within you. And every one of them, you know, if you just turn your light on. Wow. You know, imagine this. Okay, it's getting dark there. So I think you can imagine this better. It's 3.30 here. But imagine being in a room where it's total darkness. Can't see a thing. And then all of a sudden, you, you find the light switch. You turn your light on. My question, and then when you look around the room, you see the file folders, you see the TV, you see the computer, you see the desks, you see the chairs, you see the clothing, you see the art on the wall. My question to you is, did all those things appear in the room when you turned the light on? No, they were always there. Your light just wasn't on. And so what consciousness is, is when you find the light switch of your mind and you can tap into all of the, the, the unending abilities that you have within you. You are born with everything that you need. You don't need anything outside of yourself. You are born with everything that you need. Like every young girl that's born is born with every egg that she will ever mature or will pass through her system. She's born with every egg. But sisters, 
do you realize that if that's true, when your grandmama was born, she had your egg in her too? Think about what I'm saying now. Every woman, every Every female is born with every egg that she will ever mature. So when you were in your mother's womb, your mother, when she was born, already had her egg in her when she was in your grandmother's womb. Think of the science of what I'm saying. Just try to break it down. You might not get it right away, but if you think about it and you follow this, this is why it's about science. And science isn't like biology and chemistry and physics. Science comes from the word scient, which means to know. Science is knowledge and wisdom, but more importantly, application of that wisdom into a life system that makes you a productive citizen of the world. I have a thank you for that, uh, Dr. Kawa. Um, I think what you're saying is about time and space, because when there's no time and space, everything is already there, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't be in existence. Isn't that what you're saying? Time, space. You ever have deja vu? Yeah, 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 exactly. Deja vu, like you think, hey, wait a minute, this happened before. Mm -hmm. I've done this before. Wait a minute, you said that to me before. In fact, I was. I was even drinking the same orange juice mm -hmm. when you said that. You have said today, deja vu is the collapse of time and space. Think of it like this. You write a book and then you read a book and you say, wait a minute. I remember that. Well, you wrote the book. You should. <laughs> mm. That's time space continuum. Time space says you have always been around and you've been everywhere. Mm -hmm. We weren't just born when our parents conceived us. In fact, many people, from what I've studied, there are nations of the ancient world that believe that birth is the death of the spirit and that your body is the tomb or the temple of the spirit that was captured when you were conceived. And they believe that conception and birth is the death of your spirit and that death is the rebirth of the original spirit. Yeah. Let me say this again. Yeah, yeah. I had to think about the death and the spirit. No, exactly, because I'm, you see, it's hard. English doesn't allow me to say what I really want to say because the <laughs> words are not there. <laughs> I, I have to Africanize everything that I say. So in Africanizing it, I have to take the English language and like like hip hop, I, I, I have to move it around, you know? So that like when I when something is good, really good, what do I say? I say that's bad. <laughs> because you wouldn't you wouldn't understand there's no word for anything that is so good. So I gotta say, yo, that's bad. Because bad takes the word good and makes good gooder. <laughs> so, and then if I want to get real deep, I change my intonation in my voice. Mm -hmm. I say, oh yeah, man, that's bad. But something that's badder than bad is if I say, you know, that's bad, bad. That intonation of my voice makes good better than bad. And then I get my body into, I say, yo, man, that's bad. <laughs> my, my body motion and my intonation makes good better than bad and better than bad. So, brother, so English doesn't allow me sometimes to express mm -hmm. myself, so I got to Africanize. Myself. Excuse me, Brother Cabana, but from, from what you just said, uh, according to the Congo uh, spirituality, that's, why, that, that's when marriage... Uh, 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 come into light to bring that broken spirit actually that came to birth to bring it the wall having the yes. female and the man energy to one to get it to the next level of human exactly and that birth that when 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 a man and woman are in 
the lover's embrace. It is the only time that we are God. Yeah. Because God come in a female mm -hmm. and a male energy. Mm -hmm. But when we are in the embrace, or let me call it the rapture, the physical relationship, a man within a woman, they become one. So that is God. And the end result of God is to re reproduce God, which is the reproduction of a child. So here's another thing. There is no such thing as an illegitimate child. There, there is no such thing in the, in, in the African framework of an illegal human being. Every child is a child of the creator. We have laws that talk about illegitimacy. The law is what's illegitimate. Not that baby. No baby born is illegitimate. Every baby born is the creator. You know, in many parts of Africa, there is no word for a senior citizen home. There is no word for an orphanage because from an African perspective, you never threw your elders or your younger away. Mm -hmm. So that which you did not do, you had no word for. And so the concept of ever disrespecting the elder just didn't exist. The concept of putting a child away into a foreign place, if his mother died, Somebody in somebody in the community took the baby. Yeah, yeah. If, if an elder should lose uh, somebody that takes care of them, somebody in the community took care of the elder. That's just the way it was. That it wasn't even thought twice. It was just the way it was done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 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 so as as we're looking at this, when you when you collapse the time and space continuum, you begin to realize how awesomely eternal you are. But then after that, the fifth dimension that African folk live in, original people live in, is the dimension of light. You live in the light, the light of the wisdom and the knowledge of the ancestral realm while you're still alive. Mm -hmm. You walk with the ancestors. So to go back to where do we go from here, Walk in the light. Understand you are the light. And then the sixth dimension is gravity, where you leave your imprint in the cosmos. It's not what no, where we are into now, into this Aquarius age, entering the fifth dimensions. We, we, we've been, we've had the potential to be in all six dimension all these years. We have never not had the ability to be in those six dimensions. That's why they come down so hard on us because they know that once we get, once we understand we are like whales living in goldfish bowls. <laughs> yeah. And this is why we get in, this is why we live the way we live. This is why our children react in school the way they do. You know, when, you know, when I was, teaching eighth grade I was teaching social study history geography subjects like that and um, I was teaching my eighth grade class and they said to me uh, brother Kaba this is boring I say yeah this is boring I say how boring is this is this real boring I say really boring they say yeah this is real boring I say well you multiply that by 10 that's how bored I am teaching you this nonsense because honestly, I don't blame our children for rejecting this nonsense. I have to be careful when I say what I say because I don't want to make it seem like I'm encouraging them not to pass tests and things like that. But this is nonsense that they're learning in school. The, 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 the African methodology of teaching is very different from what the children experience today. When you take a standardized test where you read something on this side, and then you fill in dots on this side, that's a skill. Test taking as it relates to standardized tests is a skill. That's like a subject. Children should be taught test taking skills. 
I teach test taking skills. There's two ways you can pass a standardized test. When you know the right answer and when you know all the wrong answers. <laughs> but you don't have to know the right answer to pass a standardized test. It's ridiculous the way they set this education system up. That's why their own children are shooting each other on campus. Because they're tired. This educational system, we have to start to educate our own children from our perspective. Yeah. And we got to teach them science. I'm not saying no teach uh, science. I'm really into science. Chemistry, physics, into mathematics. I'm into subjects but our way, not their way. Because they didn't get it right. It's like vomit. You know? I, I know that sounds um, nasty. That sounds um, real nasty. Can I ask a question? There's a question from Russ Isaac Tovedo. Can you hear me? Dr. Kavakamene, the Kemites said they came down from the origin of the blue now where the god Hapi dwells, yes. Ethiopia. Yes. Ethiopia is now a Christian country they possess the oldest Bible book and the Ark. What is your perception of that? My perception is there's a book that I use in my book, Spirituality Before Religion. It's called Lafafa Sedek, which is like the bandelet of righteousness, which is where the Egyptian book of the dead came from. It's called the book of life. Mm -hmm. And again, let's go back to Ethiopia for a moment. And let's move away from 1885 when Africa was carved up at the Berlin Conference. Let's look at Africa at a time where they had their own boundaries. At this time, you cannot separate Eritrea from Djibouti, from Somalia, from Ethiopia. You can't separate. For political economic reasons, they're carved up now into four countries. But back in the day, they were all the same people. The Kenyans were the same people. You have a people that live in southern Ethiopia and uh, northern Kenya. They're called the Konso people, K-O-N-S-O. -O. They're Konso people. But they're the same people. You know, you know, it's like if you had family in your house and people were in your in in their bedrooms and people were in the living room and somebody came in and put a a boundary or a barrier between the bedrooms and the um and the front room and the people in the bedroom were taught a different language than the people that were in the front room they named the people in the bedroom a different name than they named the people in the front room. They're still the same family. They're still the same people. And just because Europeans came in and carved up this boundary between Ethiopia and Kenya, that doesn't mean that is accurate. They're still the same people. You can go to Sierra Leone and you can go to parts uh, that, that go up there and you know, you have a people known as the Vi people, V-A-I, people. When the Europeans came in, they cut Africa up there. They're still the same Vi people, but one group speak French and the other group speak English because of the Europeans that came in and divided that land up. So the original peoples of this area are the Kushites. Ethiopia, Sudan, Chad, Djibouti, Eritrea, Somalia. In fact, Kemites, Hatshepsut of the 18th dynasty, when she sat on the throne in Kemet, her family sat on the throne in what's called Pu'anit or Somalia. There were marriage relationships between these individuals. Here's, here's another interesting concept. Of the 18th dynasty, Amenhotep III and Queen Tai got married. Amenhotep III was an African from Kemet. Queen Tai was an African from Nubia or Sudan. Their marriage brought these two African kingdoms together. 
Now, years later, William Shakespeare is going to write a story. And he's going to base his characters on Amenhotep III and Queen Ty. And that story that he wrote, William Shakespeare, whoever he was, was called Romeo and Juliet. On Broadway, there's a play called Aida. Same thing. But now let me take you into your Bible. In the Bible, Amenhotep III and Queen Ty really are the historical figures upon which uh, Solomon and Sheba are based on. Amenhotep III and Queen Ty give birth to Amenhotep IV or Akhenaten. Akhenaten is who Moses is based on. Moses actually historically is Akhenaten. There's a book titled Moses and Akhenaten by Ahmed Asman, O-S-M-A-N. You want more information? You can go to that book. He'll show you the lineage of how Moses was a mythological figure that was superimposed over the historical character we call Akhenaten. But hold on, let me just drop the other shoe now. The actual mythological figure of Jesus Christ actually is King Tut, historically speaking. See, what Europeans do is they take our historical reality and they superimpose their fantasy over our historical reality. That is what religion has become. Religion has become their fantasy of our reality. Can you get to that? <laughs> These are things to be thought about, family. And I, and I ask you, don't believe a word I say. I'm not here for you to believe me. I'm only here to make you think. I want to make you think, family. I just want to take you out of that comfort zone that you've learned to live in. And I want you to feel a little uncomfortable. And if you're uncomfortable, then I'm comfortable because I'm doing my job. If you are, if you are still comfortable, I'm uncomfortable because I haven't done my job. Okay, you know, Dr. Kaba, a few people have to leave. I think Yahumya has to leave and Jonathan left because um, um, he had to leave. He didn't have any more. And he wants to thank you. He found it very inspiring. And uh, what did he say? Um, yeah, very inspiring. And he wants to thank everybody. That's it. And Nehemiah. Well, no. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, we could be here for about another 10 minutes, my sister, because okay. I know this is a lot of information. So let's do another 10 minutes and then I'll look forward to coming back on, a, on another time because I know so many people have so many things that they have to do. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, so I think so then for the last 10 minutes, we can ask the last questions then. Yeah, if people have still have questions. Um, yeah. I got many, I got many. I got <laughs> plenty, plenty of questions, plenty of questions. So um, this is from a friend, uh, the knight who's from Eritrea. Um, her question is basically, um, what is the origin of the African Americans? Do they come from West Africa, Central Africa? I know the answer. I could answer it, but I would like for you to answer it, of course. There is a book. It's entitled Le Chemin du Nil, which means the paths of the Nile. Mm. The paths of the Nile. One of the most important things to realize is that there were migrations out of East Africa that went West. I wrote a lesson plan titled, The People Who Built the Pyramids Built the White House in America. And as Africans migrated out, they, uh, uh, this particular book, Abu Bakari, cites six migrations that he can track from Kemet 
and Sudan, Ethiopia, from that Nile Valley, he can trace them into West Africa. The point I'm making is that West Africa, the people of West Africa were also Central Africa. The people in West Africa migrated there. And sometimes West Africans would go back East. There was a lively, see, we get the impression everything started happening when Europeans got on the scene. We don't realize there was a lively world trade amongst the Africans in Asia. And when Africans traded with Asia, it was African to African trade. We're not talking about the Asians we know of today. We're talking about strictly African people living into it. And I know it's hard to believe because we we live in a time where they have so uh, denigrated us and our achievement that we cannot fathom a world that we're trading with, with each other in China and in parts of the world. But to go back to the sister's question, I want to make it clear that the many of us came from West Africa, but don't leave out Congo. A lot of Africans were brought through Congo. However, here's the key. The most dynamic impact that any particular part of Africa had on the American hemisphere was Yoruba. West Nigeria, the Yoruba people, and here's why. Because throughout the American hemisphere, the, the, the Orisha tradition coming out of Yoruba made its mark on the minds of Africans here. The spiritual system is the system in Spanish, Africans called it Santeria. In French, Voudan. In Portuguese, Candomblé. In the English-speaking Caribbean, Jamaica, Trinidad, Obia. And in America, it's the Baptist church. So that when you say, where did they come from? They came from West Africa, many of them. They also came from Central Africa. But also keep in mind that when Isabella and Ferdinand, took over Spain from the Moors, from the Africans. When they took over, the first Africans that were brought here were the royal families of the Moorish empires that were in Spain. It's the Spanish that start to bring Africans to America first, long before the French, the British, the Dutch. It's the Spaniards. The Portuguese are in Africa because remember the Treaty of Tordesillas, the Pope signed it, gave half the world to, gave the West to Spain and gave the East to Portugal. So you're not going to see a lot of Portuguese in America, but where you will see them is in Brazil because the line of demarcation cut down and gave Brazil to Portugal. That's the only thing that the Portuguese really have in the Western part of the world. Everything else is in Africa, Angola, Mozambique, places like that. So that when you ask where we come from, we come from West Africa and Central Africa, the, the Africa that we are. But he, let me drop another shoe. The first people on the American hemisphere were Africans. It was the Twa and Buti. They were the first people here. They're known as Paleo-Americans. The Native Americans that you see, they're not the original Americans. The Apache, the Arapaho, they're not the original. They're the fifth migration of, of people coming to this continent. The first people that came were Africans. They were known as the Paleo-Americans or diminutive blacks, the short statured blacks, derogatorily called pigs. The next were the taller Africans, the Clovis Folsom people. The third were the Algonquin <clears throat> who were still African, 
but had gone through morphological and physiological changes. The fourth migration to America were the Inuit or the Eskimo from the northern part of the American hemisphere. The final one that really brought the most people into this area that met these Africans that were here were, came because of the Mongolian invasions. When the Mongols attacked villages in Asia, these Asians moved across, came down through the Bering Strait and then came into America. The people we see today are a conglomeration. They are a mixture of all of those people. But the first human beings in America were black, period, done. Evidence. The book is called The First Americans Were Africans by David M. Hotep. He charts it straight down. He shows you. We have found, bo I shouldn't say we, archaeologists have found bones in California of a black woman. 90,000 years old. Now, do you know where that brings the human family to? 90,000 years old, there were human beings in America and they brought civilization with them. They were not primitive people. They were a people that had a technology and these were black people. Do you know that the state of California is named after a black woman known as Khalifa? The Hawaiians were black. King Kamehameha, the last king of Hawaii, had a little short afro. His sister, Laila, she was a black woman. I had an aunt look like her. We don't know our history. We don't really understand how dynamic we are. And right now, everybody that's in this chat room right now, everybody on this Facebook page, we all could be related and don't even know it no matter where you may be from. Just, just, yeah. like, you said, just like you said earlier, right? Uh, 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 until we get to our 17th um, family, yes. Yes. it's more than a, exactly. a million, <laughs> 400,000. Exactly. exactly. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, when you look at the world like that, you understand why the ancestors are so important, but you also understand why you got to know your history. And why my desire more than anything else is just to make us think. Because I know that this is heavy on a lot of people. Some, some people that have tuned in may have never heard this in their life before. Some of it may be shocking for them. And I understand that. But may I recommend that you go to Amazon and get my book, Spirituality Before Religions, because I lay it out all there. Um, I, I have an online class that you can go to Philippe mm -hmm. Matthews. You must have. For anybody watching us right now, or maybe later on, just get a book. Oh, yeah. Spirituality mm -hmm. Before mm -hmm. Religion. Yes. It's, it's Actually, almost, this might be like the next great challenge, right? Getting the book of Dr. Uh, Professor Kabakami. That, that, that's a, you know, that's a good first step, brother. I like right. that. That's a good first step. But you can also go to my, my website and you can download my free e-course mm. and my free study guide. You can go to kabakamane.com, www.kabakamene.com. And you can download my free e-course and my free study guide. And you'll be able to keep up with the work that I'm doing and you can get a sense of where I'm headed with this work. And you know, again, family, I'm, I'm, I'm just so, the more I study our history, the prouder I become of who we are as a people. And I'm so excited for our young people because I have so much respect for them and for all that they are attempting to do. All of them that are in the street right now, all of them that are saying, you know, black lives matter, you know? And like, I understand all lives matter, but I'm not saying all lives don't matter. I'm just saying that black lives matter because I have not seen too many people of European descent with a knee in their neck. I have not seen too many of them get shot in bed 
or shot simply because they're jogging down the street. And all around the world, be it in Amsterdam or London, in South Korea, in the United States, in the Caribbean, South America, people have had enough. And our young people are leading the way. The young people got the energy and the elders got the knowledge. Together, we'll have emancipation and liberation. Ashe, and this during the Aquarius age, like it was predicted to. Oh yeah, it's right here, brother. The age of information is right around us now. It's all here, we can see it. And again, I go back to the fact that we, we now, think of Marcus Garvey. Think of what the Honorable Marcus Garvey could have done had he had Facebook Live. Yep. This, this brother connected the African world, didn't have phone, didn't have TV, had a newspaper. How did he do that? Look at what we have now. How we're going to do, we're going to continue Marcus Garvey's work. Mm -hmm. Because instead of having ships that will bring us from America to, to Holland and to London and... Nay. Nay. We lost it. Nay. <laughs> Nay. Nee, die man is gewoon weg. Nee. Hij zei 10 minuutjes. Hij zei 10 minuutjes. Dat was het nee. moment toen we Je weet toch wanneer een, een geest verdwijnt? Zo poef. Ik ga stuk. <laughs> om, 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 om even wat snel toe te voegen aan wat ja. de kamer net zei. Ja. Um, Marcus, inderdaad, Marcus Garvey, 1920. Mensen, 8 tot 15 miljoen zwarte mensen. Ja, maar. Het is verzameld in één organisatie. Zonder Facebook. Geen ja. Facebook. Geen ja. Instagram. Ja. Gewoon, gewoon, gewoon met de krant. En met de krant. En een vrouw aan ze zei. Don't forget that. Tuurlijk, tuurlijk, tuurlijk. Ja. Nee, maar, ik, maar, maar ik bedoel gewoon van met een krant. Ah. Gewoon met een krant. Ik kan, ik kan er met mijn hoofd niet bij. Gewoon met een krant. Ja, man. Ja. ja. Um, zullen we even kijken of we kunnen even wachten of hij nog terugkomt, maar dat weet ik niet. Maar ik kan wel even die opmerkingen lezen. Hebben jullie ook opmerkingen via Facebook nog? Uh, nee. En kunnen ja, jullie ja. natuurlijk nog opmerkingen plaatsen? Uh, want ik zie nu pas al die, die opmerkingen van... Uh, Blijven we in het Nederlands of Engels? Wat zei je? Blijven we Nederlands praten of Engels? Laten we even, la, laat we even Nederlands praten. Ja, Iemand heeft uh, zijn Facebook of iets nog aanstaan, want ik hoor een echo. Dus als je je Facebookpagina open hebt, Not me. kan je even die, um, die hoe heet het? Die... Is van je eigen? Nee, nee. Ik heb geen Facebook, sowieso, dus uh, bij mij is het niet. <laughs> okay. Ik denk dat het van Atuna is. Nee, echt niet. Oh, hoe kan het dan? Want nu hoor ik het niet meer. Oh. Ja, het zit toch. Dat is jij bent het. Kijk er nog. Ik hoor wel een klein echo. Misschien is het gewoon. Ik hoor net bepaalde opmerkingen. Eén opmerking is: dus wie gaat die krant publiceren? Nou ja, in mijn opinie. Kama komt terug. Kama komt terug. In mijn opinie hebben we Afro Magazine. Ja, klopt. Hebben we. Ja, ben ik ook. Maar sowieso, iedereen kan online, iedereen kan uh, informaties delen, toch? Ja. Ja, ja. Maar, 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 maar een, een krant is next level. Laat we, eerlijk is eerlijk, een krant is next level. Ja. Je, je wil terug in de tijd. Nou, papieren krant of digitaal dan? Ja. <laughs> digitaal, digitaal, maar, digitaal. Ja, precies. Age, je moet komen met apps dat mensen ook nog ring, ring stuurt wanneer ze online gaan. Oké. Okay. Ja. Welkom back. Welkom back. Ze kunnen niet ons Er is geen stoppen ons nu. Dit is een cruciaal moment. Hey, nu you talk about African spirituality. Dat <laughs> yeah. was het. Ja, dat was het. Ja, dat was. Ja, dat was. Maar ik kon het niet laten gaan. Ik moest gewoon terugkomen en mijn salutaties geven. Maar 
my sister, I, and to all those who are in attendance, I just thank you for this opportunity for sharing this information with my family. I just love us and so proud of what we do. No matter where we are in this world, we are one people. And we just have to start thinking like that. Yeah. And forward. And we got to do it for our babies and for those yet to be born. Yep. This is our this is our challenge. And you know, I think about our ancestors. You know, I don't know the gentleman's name, but I believe Sister I and Emak, you brought me to Emak and you brought me to a, a statue of an African American that was a freedom fighter. It was like in a mall, and there was a statue of this man. Anton de Kom. I think it was Anton de Kom. Anton. And An Anton? Anton. Yeah. Okay. I think it's uh, think of all of the people who have come before us and have, have paved the way for us. You know, when I think of our ancestors, wherever we may be in the world, and what they did to make this happen for us, they put everything they had on the line. Mm -hmm. And they knew that they may not see what they were fighting for, but they knew that if they just kept fighting, somebody would be free. Mm -hmm. And we are that generation, when you think of their greatest dreams and their aspirations, when they were going through all of their trials and tribulations and the mayhem that they must have had gone through, they just kept going and kept going because they saw somebody down the line in their heritage that was going to be able to benefit from what they did. We are them. We are their dreams. And so I ask us, what's your dream? Mm -hmm. What is it that you dream of for those that are yet born? And from this day forward, start doing things to make it happen. And realize you only have, we only have one enemy. And that is the, that is that negative vibration within us. That is trying to convince us that we are not divine beings and that we cannot achieve. Because once you defeat that enemy within everything else white folk everything else they're not enemies they're obstacles and an obstacle was born to get over they're not your enemy they're your obstacle the real enemy is the forces within us that you do not emancipate our minds and liberate us and once you once you liberate it there's no stopping. There's nothing that can be done. There's no one that can get into your way. You just move ahead and do your thing because this is our destiny. And this is the time. This is the time. Absolutely true. Thank you very much, Dr. Kaba. Uh, are there still some more questions, Omawale, that we can? Um, yeah, I, I, I can pose some questions. Um, let me let me check right quick. So um, okay, okay, okay. Mm. Oh yeah, th this is a great one. Um, what is your view on racism from the perspective of um, spirituality, African spirituality? Well, from from a spiritual perspective. Uh, yes. From a spiritual perspective, r racism doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Because okay. there's only race. And that, that race is the human race. Mm -hmm. And that human race was conceived, born, nurtured, sustained, educated, and civilized in Africa. Racism is a deficiency in the Eurasian mind. We don't have a problem. They have a problem. Mm -hmm. And so racism doesn't exist, spiritually speaking. Mm -hmm. What exists is a, a very strong inferiority complex and great insecurity as to your personhood and mm -hmm. who you are. And the reason why people will persecute you for whatever reason it may be, whatever the ism is, Isms create schisms. 
and minorities become the majority when they can break up the majority into minorities. So when the African world gets together wherever they find themselves in the world, we are the majority. They're the minority. Mm. And that leads to their insecurity and their inferiority. Their lack of melanin also helps them. So to me, racism doesn't exist. It only exists in the mind that actually believes it. In fact, the only power that the oppressor has over the oppressed is the mind of the oppressed. Because as you can see here in the United States, for the past three years, Humpty Trumpy done a job here. <laughs> Humpty Trumpy has done so. Humpty Trumpy has shown. Humpty Trumpy is okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Humpty Trumpy sat on a wall. Humpty Trumpy had a great fall. <laughs> and all the king's horses and all the king's men ain't never going to be able to put Humpty Trumpy together again. But not just that, the entire form of white supremacy is dying in front of us. All of that is dying, just like they did in UK, just like they probably will do in um, 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 in Holland. I I'm guaranteeing you, that's that's right, that's right. That that's Santa right. Claus is about to go down. Forget Santa Claus. If they're pulling down statues in UK, if they're pulling down statues in New York City of racists, if they're pulling down statues of people all around this country, who held enslaved Africans against their will. They're pulling those statues down. In UK, they threw it in the river. Mm -hmm. So that, watch Schwarzer uh, Pete or, what, or whatever that name is, he gone. Trust me. That's not going to get over well in Holland this time around. Nope. All of that is going to change. I want and to all because that. of this movement. Can I please address that? Because this is a very good point. What I've seen is that, um, and I think it was Don, Don Carleon who who who, stayed, uh, who said something about this. Um, there was uh, a quasi uh, um, singer, very good singer in in, in the Holland. Um, he was at a show. Rapper. And he, but again. You mean you mean Aquas the rapper, right? Yeah, Aquas the rapper. It's a very well-known uh, rapper in the community, right? Mm -hmm. Show and in the show he stated that he was he was going to kick out Doctor Pete, and now we have found out that um, the opposite of Doctor Pete is now um, how do you say that Don um, sending threat letters to those who are opposed to Swatapit. So they are provoking, they are provoking uh, some kind of war or whatever. They really threatened him and they threatened um, the organizations who are against Swatapit. So what is your, for me, I see it like a button. They, press, they, they um, see that they are having less and less control about this and they just want to start up the fire. This is, this is my, but what is, what is your feeling? Race war, yeah. Yes, provoke or race war. Are you still there, Dr. Kama? Here too. Here yeah. Too. So yeah. What, what is your your view? Um, this is their last stand. It's over. My mother always told me never corner a rat, and never trigger an an insane person because it's the only two times a coward will attack you. Mm -hmm. They're they are now being cornered in the world, white supremacists. Mm -hmm. Because the world is looking at this and they're realizing we can't go on like this. We can't continue treating people of melanation like this. Not if we want to survive. Because you know what I'm telling people, and some people don't really like hearing this. I'm, I'm saying, look, let me tell you something. You don't have to worry about what's going on now. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep treating black people the way you're treating black people. In another generation or two, we'll be shooting you down in the street. Black folk ain't even gonna want to talk to you no more. See, right now, black folk are still willing to talk. Mm -hmm. The younger generation in, a, in, in, in the next generation, you know, when I was growing up, 
the most profound thing I ever saw was when the Black Panther Party walked into the state legislature with guns on their shoulders. These young brothers and sisters walked into the government building with guns and it was legal. I never saw that before. This general, well, even in the early part of rap, NWA, did you hear NWA song? I'm, I'm not gonna say the word, but it's the F the police. Okay, um, uh, you, uh, you have all sorts of groups now. The younger generation ain't afraid no more. The next generation that's coming, you, you keep acting like this, they don't want to talk to you. You want that race war? You won't get it. Actually, you that won't get that race war. Actually, the generation is already here because according according to astrology, I mean, that energy of this year, those who are Absolutely. born this year are totally, totally from another age. And 20 years from now, hey. they're having all the knowledge, the culture, that, that's it. and the blackness, inclusive the energy as above, so below. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that, brother, because what we're doing now is part of that energy. This is part of that energy that we're talking about right now. This is the energy of total emancipation and liberation at a point in our lives where we're not going to handle it like this anymore. You, you gonna, you gonna get this done now, and our young people are demanding this, and it's just up to us to keep doing this, family. We just keep on keeping on, keep the solutions. But one of the first things that we can start to do is just talk to each other greet each other when we're passing in the street hey how you doing you know like when i go to my garage i have to walk from my building to my garage i pass all the young brothers hey young brother what's going on how you doing acknowledge them respect respect means to look Ra means to do again to look at them i acknowledge you i see you what's going on and just keep it moving. I'm not gonna stand there and lecture you. Acknowledge our young people, talk to them. Ask them how things are going. How do you feel about what's going on? We have to connect, but first we have to connect with ourselves. And when we connect with ourselves, then we know how to connect with other people. It's very un-African not to talk to each other. I see. You know? You know, you know, I go places and I say, wow, you know what they, and you know, like even when, you know, like the drummers come out and they start drumming, everybody's shy. Mm -hmm. In Africa, everybody's up dancing and doing their thing. And, you know, it's not about, oh, he's, he's showing off. It's not about showing off. You're doing your thing. That music has got you going. There, but see, they, they've got us acting un-African. Yes. There is they talk about the crabs in the basket. Mm-hmm. You know, about every time, you know, the story about the crabs in the basket about black people is every time a crab gets up ready to get out, one of them will pull them back down again. I don't know if you all had that story before. But you know what? I often tell that story about the crabs in the basket. If you just take that basket of crabs and return them back into the water, crabs actually help themselves. Crabs actually will sit on top of each other so that the one on top will eat. When the one on top has eaten, it'll come down, go to the bottom and push the group up so the next crab can eat. When that crab eats, it'll come down, push the group up so the next crab can eat. You see, put us back in our natural environment and we'll act natural. Yeah. In tune but if you take a natural entity out of its natural environment, put it in an unnatural environment, it is natural for the natural to act unnatural. Yes, I should. So when we're murdering each other and when we're causing harm to each other, when we are abusing our women, when we're abusing our children, it is all a symptom. I'm not excusing it. I'm just understanding that when you take a natural entity out of its natural environment, it will act unnatural. And that's natural. But return it back to its natural environment, it won't act like that. Return us back to our African mind. We ain't gonna act like this. I see. Hundred percent, thousand percent, thousand percent. So I share, I share, I share. I share. Uh, Doctor Kava, 
So actually my question about the Swarte Piet is, what is the, and I know you already, um, you already uh, answered this, but still I want to address it again. What is the best way to get rid of all this Swarte Piet nonsense? Laugh at them, make jokes of them, humiliate them. Because you want to know something? Some of the ugliest people I've ever seen is white people in blackface. They are really ugly. Because they, they don't even look right like that. And, and I think the only, I, 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 you, know, you know, some people say, you know, you can get physical. I'm not into that because that'll only get you arrested. Mm -hmm. Make fun of them, humiliate them, show them to be stupid. But most importantly, the reason why they get in blackface is because they want to look like you. That's why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. They want to look like you. Yeah. They yearn to be you. Uh, I tell people, read Frances Cress Welsing's ISIS papers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Read that where she tell you. They, they, they envy you. They want to be you. They're willing to go out. Those same people that go blackface are the same ones that will go to the beach to get a tan to look like you. Mm -hmm. They'll risk their life of skin cancer to look like you. They'll take fat from their buttocks and all over to put in their lips to have lips like you. They'll mm -hmm. take all sorts of things to make the upper part of their body, their breasts big, look like a black woman, like the Venus that they all copied. They have been copying us for a very long time. So we should just love ourselves more, actually. You know, that's being it. With nature, just being to a natural state of mind. That's it. Exactly. Okay. Because the original getting in blackface was to become black. That's where it came from, the Moors. The, 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 before they got into power, when Africans ruled the world, they went blackface to look like black. Same way we do things to look white, they did things to do black. And that's what they did. They went into blackface. But then when they got into positions of power, they started to use it against us to attempt to humiliate us. Now we got to turn it over and we got to humiliate them and let them know, you just want to look like me, but you know something? You ugly. <laughs> you ain't never going to look like me. Don't try. But you want to look like me. So I believe the answer is in humiliation. Get your okay. comedians together to start to do uh, different types of, of skits on them. I feel that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I that's how you'll turn it over because see what they, they are attempting to somehow as an energy vampire to tap into you so yeah. that they can receive your anger and that will energize them. Feed them, feed them. I feel that spiritually. I feel that. Yeah. yeah. If you laugh at them, you will be depleting them of their energy and yeah. they will not be enjoying what they're experiencing. But they really are ugly. I'll tell you the truth. They're nothing uglier than a white person trying to be black. I'll tell you. When I see them, they, I say, my God, <laughs> you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Yeah. Um, please, can I, because I'm, I'm checking here and I really have to, yeah, have to laugh, of course, about the, um, <laughs> the comments. Uh, one of the comments are, um, Black Pete is already gone. Um, and some other says, uh, Black in people fact, that Corona fact, came to, When it comes to Pete, what you need to do is you need to get a coffin and get a mock Pete and put him in the coffin. I like that. And, and have a burial every year. Bury that sucker every year. Actually, I'm, I'm going to reach out to Aquasi to do something like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if the, hey, hey, if the brother need a little bit of support, he want to bounce around some ideas, because I've been uh, laughing at them for a very long time. And I can tell you, it works. It's time to get back to them. I mean, I mean you know, we're creating. We're all the way melanin. We're creating. They can't reach out with that. <laughs> That's it. That's the bottom line. You know, and fam, once we get to this point, when we can get to this point and understand this, then we can understand liberation is only a matter of manifesting our desire. We, we got to get the emotion out of the way and examine it for what it is. And then begin to have a plan. And I believe that 
There is nothing like humor. And if you get humor along with metaphor, bury that Pete. Bury it. Have a burial. Every time they celebrate that, have a funeral for Pete. Yeah. Uh, that would upset them. That would really upset them. Great idea. Actually, I'm going to have a national funeral <laughs> coming there up. There we go, yes. On the next 6th of December. That's Everybody's it. watching. <laughs> Just be dressed in white, you know, we won't celebrate. <laughs> That's it. That is it. <laughs> we dress in black when we celebrate. Just come on with your white clothes. We have That's a national <laughs> like a ritual. That's it. This is what Dominique Safira says. We have a ritual. Uh, because they they love the idea and they say black people is gone anyways. Um it died with corona, corona killed them. That's what Nia Toka Tuka said. And um he said uh they want to be us minus the struggles. Mm -hmm. um, and um, Achisioma said, Ashe, love thyself to the fullest. And that's the comment of what you were saying, uh, Dr. Kaba, about, um, yeah, be true to yourself and be, um, uh, let's say what else, uh, noted, basically using fudu on Black Pete. That's what Nadia Monsengo just said. It's like oh. a spell. Yeah, it's like a spell. Yeah, it's like a spell. Really. I have one question left, and that was from a while ago. It's Mingo Bay, who's asking Dr. Kaba and said, please address those who say Black people didn't come from Africa, but were always here and never came from Africa. You already said that. But with here, he means like Europe, I think. Well, I, well I, I've also heard people say that like Africa is the home of the human family. Mm -hmm. All humans came from Africa, period. Yeah. There are some people who say that people were born, it's called, it, 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 monogenesis means that you only have one birth, which means it came from Africa. Then you have polygenesis where there are people who say, because they're trying to get their agenda across, they're, they're, they're trying to say that well, the human family could have been born outside of Africa. Mm -hmm. There are some people say that, you know, there were humans born in America, there were humans born in Asia, there were humans born in Africa, but, at, but there was no one place where humans came from. But that's inaccurate. Because the six forms of human family that have been traced, Orslopithecus robustus, Orslopithecus gracile, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens sapiens. The first three, Orsulopithecus robustus, Orsulopithecus gracile, and Homo habilis, cannot be found anywhere in the world but in Africa. Homo erectus is the first human that we see outside of the African continent. And even that came, even that entity, that human came from Africa and then traveled. Homo sapien, born in Africa, traveled into the Europe and America. Homo sapien sapien, born in Africa, traveled the world. But the first three cannot be found anywhere else in the world. And they date back millions of years before Homo erectus. So we know that by science, that life started in Africa, in the Great Lakes region, in the countries we today would call Kenya, Uganda, Tan Tanganyika, because Tanzania is the combined country of the continent country, Tanganyika, and the island of Zanzibar. Yeah. So Tanzania is the combined island and, and, and uh, country. I'm talking about the country of Tanganyika, which is on the continent. Mm -hmm. And then you can go to Rwanda, you can go to Burundi, you can go to Congo, you can go to the northern fringe of Southern Africa. That is where the human family was born and for millions of years lived there and lived there only. And then after they got their show together, then Africans took their show on the road and peopled the planet. That is, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's science right there. So no discussion, you just trace where the family's from and here you go, right? And, and, and please mm -hmm. go to my website, download my study guide. 44 pages. It's a total outline of all the work I've done all my life. I put it in outline form available to the community for free because 
I felt that there were the, 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 the most precious thing that I could give to somebody, I would always want it to be free. Mm -hmm. Everything else I can make money on. But the thing that I hold closest to me, I give free. That study guide is the most important thing as it relates to my direction in terms of our knowledge, our wisdom, and the things that we want to do going into the future. And in that study guide, I have an entire list of books that you can read. I have themes that you can study. I take you through each form of the human family where you can see. I take you even before the mammals existed. I take you to the age of the reptiles. That's what I do in spirituality before religions. I take you through the whole process of life. Yeah. Right. And so that you can understand how you came to be mm -hmm. and what made you brown. You know, the, our early ancestors had hair that was black. Mm -hmm. But as the as as we separated from the pongids in the tree to the hominids on the ground, our lifestyle we started to lose hair. But we had to find a way to create a heat loss system. So we started creating different types of glands. See, this is why I say this is about science. This is biology. I'm talking about. This ain't Africa. This is biology. And what happened is that as our hair got off our body, the hair underneath is pale. You know, if you if you look at an underarm of a gorilla, a gorilla is pale. If you shaved a gorilla, a gorilla would be pale. The reason why it's black is because of the hair. But where is the only part on the gorilla that you see black is right here in the face where there's no skin, uh, where there's no hair. So melanin had to kick into this part of the gorilla's face in order to protect it from the harmful rays. The hair is what protects it from the harmful rays when it's on the body. But Hair on the body stops the sun from getting to the skin, which makes the skin pale. When the hair went away, then the skin became melanated. This is science that we're talking here. And when you backtrack science, it's there for us to see. It's there for us to understand. So, who over here? I was just having a conversation with myself. I'm sorry. I saw you. I saw you were talking <laughs> fast. <too>. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. I was like, wait a minute. I'm yeah, sorry about actually, that. I thought my I thought my mic was up. This is your most right. You back you back on track because now we are we are on the water element. So <laughs> female energy. Yeah, but, and, and, and you know what I like about that though, my sister oh, yeah. I is I would hope I would be doing that with everybody that's watching. Because I made you I, think. I know because you I, know there are forty-eight people watching, and there are more than two thousand people already saw this video, and they're asking for us to keep it up so they can share it and talk with each other about this. And there are even more questions. There's a question from Dame, Jane or Ted. Hi, Jane. Thank you. That's the sister here. Um, she's asking you who is behind the ados movement and is harming the movement i don't know what the ados movement is ados movement is the american descendant of slaves okay uh and they basically are are a group of folk that believe that as african americans that they are entitled uh, to all things that will come to black people in America. Now, I have my concerns mm -hmm. because like I say, I am Nebu Africa. I am about all African people. And if a brother or sister from Jamaica comes to America or from Puerto Rico, or from Holland and you come to America and you become a citizen, uh, if you have an opportunity, I believe that you have a right to that opportunity. And my thing is for us as African-Americans, again, to go back, we have to do for ourselves, Because even in that sense, we're fighting over the scraps of the European. And we're fighting our brothers and sisters from other parts of the world for the scraps of the European. People talking about uh, they're giving us the crumbs of their cake. I tell people right now, not only don't I want the crumbs of the cake, I want to own the bakery where the cake was made. <laughs> so 
I, I am not threatened by any other African person anywhere because African people worldwide are my brothers and my sisters. I understand the point that they're making, but it is a point that has passed its time. It's just not there anymore. And it only causes confusion and conflict amongst us as an African people. Because if that were the case, then you wouldn't want anything from Malcolm X because his mother was from Grenada. Malcolm was part Caribbean. You wouldn't want the red, black, and green because Marcus Garvey was from Jamaica. You wouldn't listen to Bob Marley because he was from Jamaica. So that we have got to be very clear. And also six segments of Eidos are fueled by white supremacy to keep us fighting amongst ourselves. If you African, you my brother or sister. Yeah. I don't care where you come from. Yeah. And, th and that's how I judge this. And I'll support anybody anywhere in the world. If you African, you my brother, you my sister. Okay, let's see. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So that's the Eidos. Um... Yes. The, uh, uh, the American Ados. descendants of Africans. Africa. Or is it the African descendants of slaves? American yeah. like you have a you have a question, Sanateo? Santayo? No, 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 not not right now. Yeah, I have a, a lot of questions, but I'm gonna start off with the study guide. I think that's yeah, uh, yeah, and that's what I recommend. And and also my time is getting to that point. Yeah. Uh, what I'd like to do is just uh, in, in, encourage us to do this again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'd like because there's so much more that we have to. Uh, mm -hmm. one, one, one session won't do it, but no. if we, but continued segments will. So I look forward to continuing this conversation, and also I look forward to returning back to Harlem uh, and be able to have fellowship with my family there in Amsterdam. And if I may just do a little commercial for Sister Benji, you need to go on her tour. You need to go on Sister Benji's tour. Oh, that would be great, yeah. And anybody from anywhere around the world, if you wanna know about Africans in, in Holland, Sister Benji does it. That tour she took us on, what a day that was. What a day that was. You saw it right there. The Moors are right on the walls of the building. And they weren't there because they were enslaved. They were there because they were in charge. Large and in charge. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to doing this sister I and to all those again I encourage you to please go to Amazon and support spirituality before religions go to Kaba Kamene K-A-B-A-K-A-M-E-N-E dot com and download my study guide and my uh, e-course on my book spirituality before religions and you'll see other things that will be of interest to you I have a, a number of things that I have on my website that would be of interest to you. But I would say that the study guide is something that you want to look at. And spirituality before religions as a book is something that you want to look at. Uh, because family, we just have to get this together. Know that you have it within you. Everything that you need, you were born with. It's good to get help from other people, but you have everything you need to do it yourself. Yes, know yes. that. Teach yes. it to the yes. children. Let them know that there's nothing that they can't achieve. And uh, I'm going to look forward to the next time, family. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Kaba. I think we have almost, um, since we said that we wanted to stop, it's a quarter to 11. So I really think it's a, a good time to finish. Yes, wow. and a lot has been given. And sometimes we have to stop and digest it. You know, when you got a lot of good food in your mouth, as good as it is, <laughs> you got to chew it. You got to taste it. You got to swallow it. You got to digest it and then let the protein give your body what it needs. And sometimes when we have these type of conversations, we've been going more than three hours because we went a couple of, like we were 20 minutes before we actually went live. So we've been going for a while and now it's time to just, you know, like when you lift weights, your muscles don't grow when you lift weights. Mm -hmm. Your muscles grow when you stop lifting. Mm -hmm. When you're lifting, you're pumping them. Mm -hmm. When you stop is when they grow. 
It's the same thing with information in the brain. Your brain is a muscle that we've been exercising over the past close to three hours. Now it's time to stop exercising and then let the brain grow. Okay, 15, and if it's four hours for us. Yeah. So it's four hours for us and it was really, really exciting, really good. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> and it was all over. I mean, it looks like we didn't, you know, uh, touch all the, the questions, but we did. This is what Dr. Cobb is really good at. He touched all the questions through conversation, right? Um, I'd like to thank you all, um, Don Sanat Sanateo, uh, the, the other brothers who left. I think um, Omawali is still in the group, but he-, he I'm still here, I'm still here. You see, I, I'm I, thank you too. I was, I was enjoying my meal. I'm sorry, oh, guys. Oh, bon appetit. <laughs> How are you eating? <laughs> bon appetit. And of course, Jonathan and Yehumya um, um, uh, also. Uh, thank you very much. And if you want to do this again, we can do this again. We we have a platform. We can do this uh, another but, time. Sister, and sorry to to break you, uh, to just to disrupt you. Uh, I really want to thank you for organizing this. Having me on your platform and all of the brothers, because you're the only female energy uh, among us. <laughs> yeah. During this female energy months, we're getting into after the solar sources. So it's quite important, quite amazing from a spiritual point of view. And to anybody who's watching now or later, we're having a new challenge. It's called the Dr. Kabakame Challenge. Get the book. And you shoot your photo, video, you show it to the world because we need to have this knowledge spread around. Nah, that's a very good one. That's a very good one. Thank you very much. I also want to thank the people who are watching and the people who are participating on the Facebook who ask the questions. So we don't see them, but they are here. And you, when you see the video, you would also see all the comments. And that's really enjoyable that they were, you know, enjoying what you were saying. They will join the conversation. So thank you very much. You all heard it. You have to buy the book, uh, Spiritual, Spirit, Spirituality. Um, uh, no, Religion Before Spirituality. From uh, oh. Spirituality Before Religion. Spirituality Before Religion. I just mixed that up. Um, and My brother course, King. My, my, I just want to ask my brother King another question. Please, brother. Please yes. give me that name again. Mama, what the... Black Mama House. Wa Mama Wandombi, uh, W A space N D O M B Y. Mama Wandombi, the Black Madonna. Wa -mbo. Mama Wandombi. Wa Dombi. Yeah, the Black Madonna. Uh, w A M D O M B Y. Yeah. Dombi, Dombi, I have to, what Dombi? Dombi, yeah, Dombi means black, yeah. Black, uh, oh. In what language is that, brother? Kikongo? Yeah, in Kikongo, yeah. In Kikongo. Kikongo. Wow. I learned something new, brother. But but you know something? You you affirmed what I thought. Mm -hmm. you've, you've, you've given me a word that goes beyond just black cosmic mother mm -hmm. to mama what Dombi. Thank you, brother. In well, Kemet, we say duau, D-U-A-U, which means eternal thank you. Not just thank you, not thank you very much. Eternal thank you. Eternal thank you. Eternal. Yes. Mavimbi. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. This is what we got to do, family. All right. I look mm. forward to the future. Um, to, to all those, um, feel free to reach out. I you know, we'll work this out. Uh, and it ain't over till we win. And it sister, I, thank exactly. you so much. Thank exactly. you, your, you know, your, your energy and your desire, your love of your people uh, is just phenomenal. I so appreciate and respect the work that you do. I follow um, um, the uh, um, Kepra, the House of Kepra. I, I follow on Facebook, I see your posts. I, I see the things that you say, the, the images that you have, the people that you've brought. I just congratulate our family on, in that part of the world for all the great work you're doing. And know that your brothers and sisters, 
in New York and in the United States. We respect and honor you. And oh. we look forward to joining once again from Harlem to Harlem. To Harlem to Harlem. Thank you very much. Me. That's really touchy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all. And really looking forward to the next, the next episode of this conversation with. So everybody is a part, everybody is part of it. We are one big circle. We are all connected. Even if we don't see, so the seen and the unseen, we all do our part, right? So, guys, guys, my, my, my phone is dying. So thank yeah. you very much. I must, I must talk to you guys another okay. time. Yeah. Yes. Thanks thank for everything. Thank it you is for everything. Time. Thank you. Thank you, Omawale. Otep family. Otep. 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 Otep.